So you have you have the uh, the normal hob here. Normal gas yeah. hob. Yeah. And yeah, we're gonna then replace with a conduction hob because it's like I said, it's one one less thing to be burning gas. Ah, brilliant. So every little bit helps. Every little helps. I started doing skeleton towards the end of college when I was in UCD, and uh, there was that kind of four or five years when I was doing it. There was a little bit of travelling, kind of going to the US, going to uh, France, Germany, Austria, places like that where they've got the tracks that you have to go and train on. Okay. So there's a lot, of, a lot of time in Germany, a lot of time in Austria. They were kind of the main places that you go to. And uh, yeah, so after that was finished. Um, it was kind of a kind of a junction point, you know. After the Olympics, do you kind of keep going? Do you, you know, do you kind of go back to kind of more of a normal life, all that kind of stuff? It's a bit, it's a bit of a tough, a bit of a kind of a tough decision to make in some ways because you know you spent so long kind of working towards something and then you kind of yeah. achieved it, and then you're like, well, you know, we've had to sacrifice so much other stuff to achieve that thing. You know, is it, does it make sense to keep sacrificing, or do you kind of start doing the other things as mm -hmm. well? And you know, skeleton. Isn't really the sort of sport where you can make much of a living out of it. It's kind of a tough, tough kind of sport. Mm -hmm. It's very much a labour of love when you're doing it. At least back then, I don't know that it's changed that much because there's just not that kind of level of money in the sport yeah. to make a living. So I, I was kind of deciding, okay, well, I'm, I've kind of done the Olympics, kind of tick that box, and you know now now it's maybe time to start making longer term plans for kind of other things like my career. So because I, I was studying computer science at the time of time, oh. so I. Basically, my mentor in computers, and I've been there ever since. Good man! So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> so, you've made the transition? I've made the transition. It was yeah. a tough transition because. It is. You it's, know, you, know, you know yourself from like, sport. You go yeah. from, yeah. you know, doing one thing that's very, you know, it's very different from the conventional kind of. What's he like at making tea? This is very um, important. Um, that's good so far. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some people. Rune tea by putting the milk in first, so oh. you know and that's obviously wrong. I'm not a big tea drinker, you might know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so there'll be quite a few Olympians kind of going through that process right now. Yeah, some of them no. will be. Well, I think hmm. the squad for I think the group that went out this year are quite young, so I certainly hope okay. they have a few more, a few more cycles mm. uh, in them. Um, and they did so well. Yeah, they did. Just but yeah. you yeah. know, there's a few of them definitely that are kind of. At that kind of juncture in their lives, where they're kind of going like, you know, do I do I press on? Is it worth the trade-offs, the sacrifices, all the hardship? You know, is it another four years of that? And that's yeah, you know, that's a difficult decision to make because mm -hmm. you can't predict the future. You don't know how well you're going to do next time. Yeah. Either way. Either way. Yeah. Either way, it might yeah. work out well either way. But you know, mm -hmm. I don't think I think that it, you probably wouldn't regret trying again. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's it's a passion that you've been in so far. Um, I certainly don't regret the time that I spent doing it because it worked out really well. Um, I have um, friends from the sport who didn't make it that far in the sport. They would, you know, they kind of got as far as the qualification games, mm. the qualification competitions, but they didn't get through. And it's, I find it's difficult for me to kind of convey to them that you know everything that we'd all shared together up until that point was what made the sport really fun doing that together. And I know that little extra. It's easy for me to say because I got that extra achievement to actually go to the games, but. You know, all the rest of the stuff, the 95% of the other stuff we did together was still brilliant. Like, brilliant know, crack, had, yeah. Yeah, we were having all, doing all the training together and figuring out the tracks and doing all that stuff. So, yeah. I don't think you can really regret it if you try. Yeah. If you try it. Oh, absolutely. I'm with you there. Yeah. And, uh, like, the sport, it does set you up for life, really. All those soft skills that employers are looking for all the time, the leadership and the communication yeah. and hard work and yeah. all that is... Yeah. Brilliant, and if you have qualifications as well with that. I, I found that tough. I found myself unemployable after leaving because all those soft skills I didn't feel were um, valued here in Ireland, mm. whereas they were in the UK. Okay. So I could have got work in the UK, but family were here and all yeah. the rest, you know. But so, but I went down the whole self-employed route, did a bit of coaching and stuff, and now I'm a full-time parent, a full-time carer, mm -hmm. and it's just the best job in the world. Yeah. And uh, do a bit of p bits and pieces around the environment that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to, yeah, I'm trying to use sport as a as a way of um, getting people inspired to make little changes to, yeah. to and getting sports people like yourself, just talking about it yeah. too, um, yeah. so that people, you know, wouldn't would see that just 
normal people, whether they're sports people or whatever, are are doing what they can. You yeah. know, and if we all do our little bit, we'd be fine. Yeah. And the Chinese will look after themselves. They're going to actually go zero carbon before Ireland will. Yeah. So it's a shame, yeah, because, you know, that's what you get. Ah, there's no point us doing anything. Because yeah. those Chinese, there's a billion of them, and yeah. they're messing well, it up. Well, I mean, if you, you want to bring it back to sport, you know, if you spend too long looking at mm. what the other guys are doing, you're not spending yeah. enough time looking at yourself to get that sorted, you know? It's, there you go. Yeah, you have to sort your own game out first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant. Then you can worry about the others. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it'll be good. It'll be good, like, it's, it's a good planet. And I suppose you were lucky enough as well as myself to see an awful lot of it uh, through the sport. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I think there's so much to look forward to. Um, I know we were here to talk a bit about the climate and all that. And it's been in the news and basically it's all doom and gloom. If we don't change, we're going to die. But um, I think it can be a better world. Yeah. And, and better opportunities and yeah. you know all the jobs that are going to go like anything in oil is going to go but anything in renewable energy and all the real kind of anything that's ecologically sound you're going to start being able to make a living out of yeah. which you can't at the moment yeah. but anything got to do with fossil fuels or burning stuff yeah. you will no longer have jobs in it yeah. so that's that's a good thing in my opinion yeah well it's you know, tough it's tough for the people who are in that yeah. And I guess that's the transition. That yeah. Be, that needs to be sorted out. Like, how, yeah. how do we how do we look after those people as well? Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of knowledge. I saw a documentary the other day where they were had one of the big oil platforms in the, the North Sea was being repurposed to carbon storage. Ah. Oh. So they're kind of reversing the pipes in a way. I get you. Carbon capture, you know. So there's a lot of engineering knowledge that those sort of people have that's going to be useful as well. But. And and is that the big Bill Gates machines that uh, I think so it's called? One of those yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I don't know if you're better off just not burning it in the first place. Yeah, that's probably the the right answer. Why didn't just trying to capture it and take that as your free pass? Yes, because I think you're you're doing battle against uh, the laws of entropy there. Um, uh, there's no simple solutions, but. Um, you know, I suppose <laughs> with us, with the rugby, there's no real... Well, I, I was kind of... We were lucky in the rugby that we had, like, the Players' Union. Uh, no, yeah, brilliant. Rugby Players Ireland to help us out, like, in the transition from, I suppose, sport to normal life and jobs yeah. and education. And I did um, uh, a master's in coaching, executive coaching through the IMI. Yeah, uh, no, 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 just, um, and that was through the IMI, but also through Rugby Care Ireland, and yeah. you know, it was sponsored and stuff, and this was the, they're the kind of stuff that people need, yeah. you know, to transition through, whether it's education or retraining. Yeah. Like, any technician that was working in oil platforms or whatever, surely those skills are really transferable. Yeah you know, to, yeah. you know, wind turbines, solar, or whatever, from there. So yeah. it's just making it easier for people to do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, it's huge opportunity. Yeah, I think so. You know, I think, I think so. I will, no, I still have, the, the, the breakfast is my meat kind okay. of thing. Now, when I say twice a day, that's not strictly true. I would, instead of having... <laughs> is there like an asterisk there, like bacon doesn't count or something? <laughs> no, it's like... I've gone from like three rashers, it was four rashers to two. Okay, okay. Okay. Right, okay. And then my middle meal, I've gone from two steaks to one. Okay, okay. Baby so steps, baby, baby steps. steps. <laughs> so for me, like that's probably, but that's, you know, I suppose it's it's my thinking as well. Like, um, look, no one's perfect. No. And what I'm doing, I'm doing Peter tries. So Peter is trying to be more environmentally friendly and he's trying his best. And I'm not perfect. Mm. So, you know, there's 15 things, give or take, that I can do. That's, I wrote them all down. Yeah. And I'm doing, I'm doing 14 of them. No, I'm doing 12 of them really, really well. Okay. Two are kind of, I have to work on it. The meat is the big one. Yeah. That's what I read. But, fuck, I, I still dropped it. Yeah. An awful lot. That's good. You know, and I'm happy out. And, you know, it's funny you said that because, I do, that's the whole thing about the appreciation that, you know, when I was eating meat six times a day of 10 rugby, you didn't, oh, you said, oh, Jesus, I've eaten three more chicken yeah. uh, breasts or whatever. 
Like chicken breasts are lovely, mm. but at that stage you're just yeah, force yeah. feeding yourself and you're not enjoying your mm. food. Mm. You know, you're packing so much in. And then, um, you know, then I was to normal. And I've always appreciated that, like, we were eating meat, you know, since I was tiny. Mm. And, uh, but now I'm saying, yeah, like, you know, I'll, I'll really enjoy those two rashers. Yeah. Rather than the six I used to have yeah, or four yeah. or whatever, you know, and you do enjoy it. Um, and there's no waste. Like I, I go, you probably do something similar, but I, I haven't been to a supermarket, and that's another thing I'm doing. I haven't been to a supermarket to buy stuff in a supermarket for me in three years. Sorry. Yeah, and I find it brilliant. I go to the market in Castle Bar on a Friday. Mm -hmm. I've got the no plastic ladies there that do oh, all right. the nuts and seeds and oils yeah. and all that. I've got the veggies yeah. that are sown out the road, organic, the whole right. lot, buying local. Got the butcher, got the fishman, and got the, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And you then, managed to get everything you need for the week in that yeah, one visit. In one visit. That's pretty good. Because I, I pop into the local shop then and get the bread and butter and, uh, you know, whatever little bits and pieces yeah. I need from there. So I don't need to go yeah. to the shop. What happens then, you're only buying. When I go to the bed, you're only buying what you need. Yeah. So I found there's no waste. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, there's yeah. no waste. Yeah. So people say, oh, I can't. Two things people would say to me, ah, oh, Peter, I don't have the time to do that. So I've challenged a few people to, well, see, okay, it takes you 45 minutes to an hour to get your shopping, Lidl, Aldi, Tesco, whatever. Go into town someday and do it. An hour. Mm. And and they were all coming back. You know, it was an hour, but you know what? I spent about 20 minutes talking to everyone. Yeah, because it's a nicer experience. It's a nicer experience, yeah. experience you know. Yeah. So um, the time's not a thing. And then the second thing was, um, can you kill everything? Yes, I can. But you've, you've no waste then. Oh, expensive. Oh, geez, that's way too expensive buying all that kind of organic and whatever. Do you know what? Because you, you actually, it's same or less because... If you go to the supermarket, you, a third of the stuff generally, that's what the science would say, a third of the stuff in the Western world that you buy is thrown away. Yeah. So when you're going to the market, you're only picking up, if you're only going to eat, you're not buying a bag of oranges or 10 oranges, mm. you're buying four oranges because yeah. you only need four right, for need the four. day. Yeah. So there's none thrown away. Makes sense. At, at the end, you know, and then so you're not spending as much to buy the stuff, and none of it is wasted. So, it, give or take, it, it's around the same. Yeah. But the food tastes better, and it's a lot better. Oh, it does. Yeah, it tastes so much better. Yeah, so much better. You know, the local butcher stuff. No, you can get you can get a good steak in Lily or and you know, any of these supermarkets. But they're not as good no. as Anthony down the road for me, who mm -hmm. is my butcher. Yeah. And he's he's great. Yeah. And his cows are running around the place just out the road. Okay. Yeah, so that that's what I like, and you get a good old buzz. And I have a chat with Anthony. I have to chat with the plastic ladies. I have a chat with with the fishman and yeah. the whole lot. And I suppose you're more in touch with where your food's coming from yeah, as well. As well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the kids are loving it now as well. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, There's a market mm. down the road from here on Sundays. Oh, Herbert Market. Herbert Park. Yeah, yeah. One. yeah, it's really good. Um, and our kids love it there. Like, there's a fruit, really? there's a fruit and veg thing there, and yeah, they yeah. love looking through and looking at all the stuff and. You know, it's just somehow much more engaging when it's there in that setting than it is and just kind of brushing through the supermarket. Mm -hmm. you know. It's all kind of hidden behind packaging and you know it's very kind of sterile and shelves, whereas it's more kind of like, you know, you're just better connected to it, I think, through the markets. But mm -hmm. they're not always easy for people to get to. And, mm -hmm. you know, I guess you do have to understand that they're, mm -hmm. they can be a bit more expensive as well. So mm -hmm. it's not, it's not mm -hmm. always accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, I suppose I, I would disagree with that okay because that was my thinking as well yeah. but i suppose you're right yeah you're not buying as much just yeah. don't it evens out yeah I'd, I'd say like you don't know until you try yeah that's my yeah. thing you know and maybe try two or three times because mm -hmm. do you know where you go into a new supermarket you don't know where everything is yeah, it takes yeah, twice yeah, yeah, yeah. like same with the market the, the first day might take you a lot a, a fair bit longer but by the third time you go there you're, you're going around this quick mm -hmm. um now i have gone to supermarkets a handful of times to get stuff for somebody else, other people, and I've got to stage now, not being absolute freak about this, but it's almost like I, I the last the first time I went in, I went about a year and a half without actually going in. Then someone asked me, could I go to the mm. whatever? And I did, and I got a shock. I said, I got a shock from the plastic. Oh yeah. 
So much plastic. Oh, so much plastic. I'd forgotten how much plastic it was. Yeah. Like, you, you go and you, you get six oranges. You, yeah. you, you, sh- it's six oranges. They're, they're almost individually packed now yeah, and yeah, in the yeah. bag and in the bag. Mountains, mountains, yeah. Mountains of it. And it, it, all the supermarkets are the same. They're no different. And, oh, gee, uh, it's almost like, you know, a super, uh, Superman, his, his nemesis is kryptonite or whatever, whatever. I, I was almost like kryptonite. <laughs> get away from all the plastic. <laughs> No, <laughs> you know, by the second, third time I went back for someone else because I was helping someone through COVID, you kind of get used to it as well. Yeah. So I got an awful shot going back in. Mm. But then I realized, like, it's the norm. Then. And after doing it two or three times, the norm again. Yeah. Now, I haven't been in now in a while, so yeah. I might go back so in. It's a convenience and... factor of everything yeah. being packaged like that. So we do, yeah. like, we do yeah. recycling. Go on. Um, all the, you know, cardboard, can tins, the plastic. We've Go got on. brown bins. For the apartment block, uh, yeah, and you know glass as well. So really, the only stuff that's not kind of gotten rid of properly here is the. It tends up being a lot of the kind of the soft plastic wrapping and stuff like that. Yeah. Now I think Tesco's are taking some of that now. Yeah, you've for, heard about it. Now. So we're starting to gather it up and keep it. So oh, that, that bit there is getting less and less used as we go. You know. Absolutely, and and when you were paying for it as well, do you pay by the? Uh, we're, a bit, we're a bit funny because we're yeah. in an apartment block, so I, I think it's almost like a fix. They're supposed Fair to enough. do. They're supposed to do the by ways, isn't that how it's normally done? Yes, yeah. or that's the way know, it seems to be going. I don't know that they yeah. enforce that properly, and it would be even harder, obviously, to enforce an apartment block. But yeah. you know, it took it took me a while to get the brown bins brought in here. Like it was definitely a bit of a uphill struggle really? to convince uh, the management guys in here that you know we, we should get the brown bins in because they're you know we want to get rid of the food really? like, properly. Because they're they have they might have other issues. It might depend on the apartment block that you're in. Because mm-hmm. if there's contamination in it, if people are putting in stuff that's not supposed to be in it, oh, I get you. Yeah. it's harder to yeah. do. If that's harder to deal with in an apartment block place, it's like, well, which apartment was it? What do you do? I've done. I do composting now. At home. Yep. Yeah. I found an old bin, you know, a big blue bin or yeah. whatever, and it's almost full now. Yeah. Just compost, and you can see the little worms are busy, busy, busy yeah. working away on it. Yeah, and that's all. Is there stuff there that you, there's some things that are compostable. Yes. But they need to be kind of industrially composted, I think. Oh, Is there a difference right. in some but of that? I have looked into it greatly. Yeah. I think there is some stuff yeah. that there would be, like cardboard, for example. I think you can yeah. put cardboard in. Yeah. It, it can help. It actually can help to uh, it a bit. Or like, like a, yeah. Okay. A mulch kind of thing. Okay. You wouldn't be throwing a whole heap. Well, this is it. Like, yeah. yeah. If you end up having, like, yeah. all this cardboard that we have there from, you know, mm. the, the, the stuff there, like, that's... We can't compost that. No, no, no. That is recycling, but mm. I think there are some things that do need to be kind of industrially composted, though. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's really the food waste. Yeah. You know, and that's the main thing. And and, and it, do you try growing any stuff at home? Yeah, yeah. I've got an urban garden going. What have you got growing there? So, um, I had sunflowers last year, and they got to ten foot tall. Ten foot. Ten foot. Yeah. Because I stood up beside them, and I'm like six two or whatever, and it's like way way ahead of me. Yeah. And um. So what I did was the guy next door uh, pub was throwing out loads, mm-hmm. loads of stuff, skip, jobby, mm-hmm. and I saw this big, huge industrial fridge lying on its flat right. with no um, door on it. Right. I said, "There is a bed, like a, oh, there yeah, is a bed. Yeah, yeah. It's bigger than the table, like or whatever." And so, do you need drainage in it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But that, that's. Yeah, so drill a few holes. So I drilled a few holes yeah. through the bottom of it. Uh, I did what they call because I, you know, I looked up YouTube or whatever, and it seems to be sorry. The best thing was was a thing called um, a raised bed, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know the term, but it was like lasagna um, soil or lasagna Layered. raised bed. Okay. So layers of different name. Okay. So what I did at the bottom is I put a carpet. Okay. An old carpet that your man has thrown out, right? So that water would hold, okay, but eventually soak through if, if it was just too much, too much. Right, okay. and holds in the bottom. That's interesting. Cardboard, which yeah. is another kind of a layer, yeah, and then sticks and you know, kind of heavy like sticks, yeah. sticks, rocks, 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 rocks. Like well, because you need drainage, you need drainage. Right. That is handy. Yeah. Do you reckon it'll fit? Might be a bit of a squeeze, but we'll try it anyway. Right. Here you <laughs> see if I get in. Oh, there's a nice seat in there. There you go. 
Ah, there we go. There you go. Ah, sure. Loads of room. No bother. Yeah. So you've do, you're doing your squats and power cleans and whatever those uh, legs yeah, yeah. are. Yep, and this has got a little electric motor on as well, so... Oh, has it? All right! <laughs> Put it on full power! <laughs> Are you still alive there, Dave? I'm still alive there. <laughs> <laughs> I have to sleep with the baby. I'm the child, right. We'll see how we get on. We'll see how we get on. This is some promotion for... Um, this company, whoever is this bike. They've got a full Peter Bracken in the front of it. Obviously, your legs must be in good order still, so... You know what I mean? <laughs> Look! Straight Oh, we're flying it. Yeah. Oh, I hear the whir of the... Um, yeah, the little, little motor's working away. Ah, oh, the little electric motor. Brilliant. Stole land of this giant rugby player, yeah. But in a pinch, if we were kind of trying to get home, yeah, it would work. So he cycled into town and it maybe had a drunk passenger, oh, yeah. and the taxi didn't want to bring you home. Yeah. Here we go, solution. Yeah. You got um, three wheels. Pretty much zero emissions uh, travel, active travel. Enjoy on. Went so to the, went to the shopping, center, shopping, bring the kids to school. I'm picking up uh, delivery. My wife calls me Dave Roo. Oh, Dave Roo, brilliant. And bring it back. Um, yeah, great. Brilliant. That's cheaper than a second, cheaper than a car. Cleaner than a car. There's no tax on it. No insurance. And uh, yeah, it's cheap to run. I charge the battery up every, every two weeks. Just charges up overnight. Ah. I put about 400 kilometers on it. Right. It's like the steps in the old... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like the cycle miles. Yeah. yeah. This could also work in the likes of Castle Bar, no problem. Yeah. For those small, shorter trips along the Greenway or whatever, oh, yeah. in and out of town. The whole lot, and yeah, you know. I think they're uh, they're looking to try and move move a lot of the delivery stuff to using cargo bikes now because they're a lot quicker and cheaper around the city. Yes, and yes. they're they're smaller. You can park them. Obviously, the capacity is a bit lower, but if you have a few yeah. more of them, yeah, you can. You know, they're easier to get into little you know, narrow streets and stuff. They're not blocking roads. Uh, yeah. Do you know one? And one time we would have had a joke, a bit of a laugh about the tuk-tuks and stuff, is oh, that yeah, what they're yeah, called yeah. in whatever, but do you know what, they served their place. They did. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that, David. No and worries. Thank you for the whole you. day. Well, it's been really great catching up. Ah, fantastic. So we've got Connolly and Connolly's. So David, yeah, David Connolly, Olympian with Connolly Motors ID4. So you might be changing that at some time. Yeah. Yeah. So, maybe, maybe, there you go. <laughs> so just back at the home place, so I've got the car charging. Okay, so I'll charge the evening, overnight, and we'll be fully charged in the morning. Simple job, 20 seconds to get that done. Drive on. <laughs> 